today we're going to talk about kindling. Kindling is what I use to light this fire here with and the other fire outside and fires all over the place actually. Um, and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll just run you through this so that you get a, a better idea. Now the wood comes from outside of course and it comes in a variety of sh sizes, shapes, whatever and it's usually, usually it's always split. But the problem is you just can't put a match to a big piece of wood like that it just won't light up. So what I do here is I keep all some of this wood and this, I don't know if you can how well you can hear that. This is super dry. Oh, I'm going to put that back in here or the dog will take it. And what I do, I light my fires different than most people. And I've been criticized that I don't know how to light a fire. But after lighting a lot of fires, this way that I do it, it's the easiest and most simplest way to get a fire going for me. Now, what I do is I'll put the big stuff in the bottom of the fireplace and I'll build it up using the big stuff and then I just keep going smaller. And up here we have a basket full of newspapers and this basket's full and I wish my wife wouldn't do that because there's no room in there and I got to take them out and put them in the garage and I usually take all these extra newspapers and throw them in the uh, a dog food bag because uh, at some point in time we're not going to have any more newspapers because we don't buy the newspaper we get the newspaper from my mother-in-law anyway I also buy these things these things are fire starters and they're cheap buck 25 I get all of those so I got uh, one two three four I got 12 fires that I could light in one of these and for a buck I get all kinds of them so what I do is I'll take one piece of this and break it off and I'll stick it between the large stuff and this stuff with a little piece of wood sticking over the top of it something like this and as it burns it lights the bigger piece and that bigger piece it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter and pretty soon I've got myself a nice little fire going and it burns from the top down and I keep getting these things but these things are uh, butane lighters they don't work very good but I still use them. You want out? Okay, dog wants out. Hang on. Want out? Come on, let's go. Let's go. There. Good. That'll keep him busy for a while. So this, all this wood here, most of it is cedar, which I'll show you in a minute when I go around the back. I also have a bunch of uh, Manitoba maple that my son brought home and we cut it up into shorter pieces than the full length. Those are all 16 inches or bigger and these ones here are about a foot long. Anyway after I pile that into the bottom then I pile that in there I might roll up a little bit of newspaper and throw it in there and <clears throat> And light one of these things and I got a rip roaring fire going here in no time flat so let's go out in the garage and let's see what kind of kindling I got out here also oops I guess the door was locked all that newspaper from the fire yesterday or not newspaper all the uh, cardboard I got we store it up here and up here on this top shelf, <coughs> once it cools off more, 
I'll put uh, milk and juice and all kinds of stuff up there. It's kind of like an extra storage place for fridge. So right now it's 67 degrees in the garage or about 20 Celsius, so you know. And uh, stop spraying New Brunswick. The glyphosate is the thing that they use for uh, spraying all the woods around here. Okay. Right here, I've got two boxes of kindling. Now, you can't tell from all the bigger stuff that's laying on the top, but it's further down. It's full of the same stuff that you see inside the house. All, all split up. And what I do is, is I'll take a bigger piece of wood and I'll either split it, like I'm getting ready here, to make these bigger pieces smaller so that they'll dry out better. And here is my kindling box that uh, I'll split those other pieces up, these ones as well, into smaller chunks. And this wood here is all wood just for the for the yodel. Now, outside here, let's go have a quick peek here. Ooh wee, it's cold out here. Here's the kindling over here that uh, this is cedar that I got from over the hill from last year and uh, as I need kindling I'll just bring in some pieces and I'll split it on the splitter and then when it's small enough that I can put it on uh, I'll split it up as well hey what you got there nice big freaking dirty old bone also right here I've got three bags of kindling and then here's some more wood for uh, inside on the yodel. I just put it out here because I don't have a ton of room in there. And there, here's some the odd pieces that were left over from stacking it all up. Because as you can see, she's right to the top. And there's enough space in here for another couple of cords. But that's another story for another day. Let's go back in. Holy frick, it's cool out there. Alright. So what I do is once the piece of woods gets small enough that it's not, uh, I'm not going to endanger myself so much, I'll sit on the bench here. I'll pull the stump over near it. And I'll start splitting up kindling. And well, let's just do some here, maybe. Let me see here. Get this off of here. And hang, hang on here while I screw on here. windy out there today. So, here we go. And I'll move you over here. I'll just leave you here. You probably can see everything from there. I did shovel out the uh, bottom of the fireplace yesterday, so I do have a bucket of ash. But this is what I do here. I raked it up after it was cleaned up. Okay, I guess you can see pretty good there. Okay, so here's what we do. Take a piece like this.
just keep reducing it into smaller pieces. And eventually, if it's small enough, I'll throw it in there and it'll dry out really nice. Now this here is a piece of hardwood so it's not really uh, uh, easy to split. It's really hard actually. So there's a big difference between that and this which is a piece of cedar. Cedar will split quite easily if there's no knots. Like that. And the smaller you get it, you get it down to about this size. And then there's another couple of techniques that you can use to make it so that it lights easier. It's called feathering. So, what you do. You make a lot of these little tufts on it so that when it does light, um, these little curls will light up and then it will help get the bigger piece of wood lit. But this piece here is a wet piece. So what I normally do is I like to fill up my box full of these little pieces and over a period of of a year or two, they'll dry out really nice. And I want to get these, might as well do it now, small enough so that I could use it for burning inside there. Get rid of them all now. Now this big piece might not fit in here. down here is uh, I don't really need it actually tell you the truth because I've got those two big boxes of kindling already there so just give me a second here and we'll split up a bunch of this smaller stuff some of it in here. Alright, anyway. See, I don't know. This is called checking, and it means that it's starting to dry out. And here's some bigger checks here. Let's see how this piece splits. The 
this stuff is hard as hell. But you can see, this piece of wood here will, will light nice because of, look at all the splinters that are coming up on it. Now, it's small enough that I could whack it on the little stump that I got in here. But I don't have time for all of that today. I'm just going to try to release it. Because these little pieces, they burn good. In the little. This stuff isn't splitting very good because, but look at that. If you shine that all up or sanded it down, it'd probably be a nice little piece of wood, whatever it is. Now normally, softwoods in our uh, fireplaces here because we have plenty of uh, hardwoods around. I don't burn uh, the softwoods because it's sappy and it could uh, form creosote in the chimney. Which could catch fire. So like this is a perfect kindling here. This is nice and dry. But these bigger pieces don't fit in that little stove very good. They fit in lengthwise, but widthwise, I like to have them a lot smaller than that. careful with this thing here because as you can hear the way it pops it's uh, because there's some big knots and stuff like that in it a piece of wood flies out of here just like a cannon like a cannonball This splitter is uh, has two parts to it, uh, four and a half tons or nine tons. Uh, this here is pretty uh, not too bad. It's heavy.
This stuff that I'm cutting here is actually firewood for uh, the little stove here. I've already filled up my basket there. Uh, it doesn't take long to burn. Now, if I'm out here for a couple of hours, I can go through a couple of cubic feet of scary. Because I split from the other end, it come apart easier. Doesn't have to break the knot. It's already been broken on part way down there. I don't uh, normally park the uh, our vehicles inside the garage here. I'd rather have the space for something else. Maybe one day I'll buy an ATV. And all of this stuff here, you got to keep it uh, under lock and key. There's a lot of rural crime. chainsaw and cutting this piece off this will never fit into that little stove but I could always throw it in the house so we'll just put it up there for now and this is the last piece Thank you. 
Nice to be able to get all this cleaned up. That is the last full piece of Manitoba maple I have down here where the axe is stuck, the hatchet is stuck in. I've got to. Uh, bunch of other things I want to do too. Like right here. Turn it down a bit. I've got uh, a whole bunch of old license plates. thinking about whoops taking those license plates and behind the uh, the stack here at the uh, chimney put uh, Boards running down like that, and then screw the license plates on it so that I can uh, keep the heat from here. But I don't think it really matters, actually. This is far enough away. This is two feet, I think, away from the wall. <clears throat> and it's far enough away of all this other stuff all the way around it. This will, this will go. And those bags are for the uh, the barn door, so it'll all go. Not worried about it. But Keith mentioned about uh, making more videos out in the garage, especially for the winter. And uh, this little heater doesn't do a very good job. It doesn't uh, heat the garage up enough in here. I have this as well. If I'm really serious about getting some heat in here. This is called a shop heater. That blows quite a bit of heat in here. And... Uh, Got another heater upstairs. Let me just turn this around here. Oh, on the calendar every day I got a mouse. I'll put an M up here. There's the 13th, the 14th, the 17th, the 21st, the 25th. Let's go check to see if there's one for today. Nope. Good sign. In the fall, those freaking uh,
Mice come in here all the time. Some people will use this stuff. I'll show you in a second here. Even there's little tiny bits of kindling in here as well. But normally, I don't keep it. I just throw it out to the out to the garbage guy outside. Which reminds me, it's garbage day again today. Every Thursday they pick up the garbage, but what I do is I like to put it out the day before, because the guy comes at like 7.30 in the morning, and uh, I don't want to have to get up to go and take it out. Some other video that I got, I show uh, you how I do the garbage cans around here. I got the garbage cans tied up to, to a rope, and I use a dog, uh, you know those snap things that you hook onto their collars with? What I do is I hook a, a rope around the mailbox, I loop it through the handle of the garbage can, so that when the wind blows and all that, and... Uh, my garbage can is still there when I come back to go get it. Believe me, walking through the snow, picking up, or trying to find the garbage can lid, which blew away, which is now attached to the garbage can, and the garbage can blew into the ditch once, and I got down there, just about killed me, uh, going down there to pick it up and get out of the ditch because the ditch walls are pretty, pretty, pretty up and down. So anyway, that's that for now. And the workbench don't look too bad at all now. It's coming. I might. Uh, And I've got to deal again with all the, the keys in here. But overall, I'm happy. It's starting to look a lot cleaner in here. Oh, look. I can get rid of that right there. This right there. Turn it around so I can see what's in there. Piles of nails, these things here for fixing uh, the dog's fence, putting the fence onto the posts. I've got three, four different sizes of them, right up to the big ones. Because sometimes the dogs will be uh, testing the uh, fence and they might spring a staple or two and then I I'm watching them all the time, so if the fence gets loose, I'll go and hammer up a uh, few new staples in it just to secure it, and it deters them for a while. Next thing I want to do is, i got to figure out what to do with all these little tubs that I got with all the screws in them. time, go get it. So I think that's 
so I'll wrap that up and I'll put this up on the internet today. Tomorrow, I think I'll be out. Uh, I wonder, check that. See if the bugger's been in there. No. Hasn't been in there yet. Just about ready to give up on that nice little life trap cage here and go back to this old fashioned uh, snap traps. I don't know where they are. I think there's four or five of them. They are the cheapest mouse trap that I've ever gotten, and they work the very best. Oh well. That's it for that. And uh, I talk about the, garb the dog food bags. Well, this is where I end up putting all the newspapers as well. So maybe I'll go grab them. sawdust for the garden. Okay. Next thing I got to work on, so workbench don't look too bad, is right here. this side here. I want to get that stuff moved back. Maybe slide that piece of plywood to the left a little more. Get all of those buckets and tubs and crap out of there so that I can move the mower over another couple of feet which will give me more room on this side for coming in and out of here. A lot of times in the winter this is the only way we go in and out of the house. And all the other doors are locked. So we just push the remote in the uh, Jeep, opens up the door, and in and out we go. And then we got to the, the close the door on the wall to get uh, secure it all up. Thanks for coming along.
today. So thanks for coming along today. I, uh, and if you got any good ideas, I wouldn't mind hearing about them. Well, we all have to uh, get along. So let's check this out before I go. That's because uh, if I got the music cranked upstairs, I can't hear uh, my wife yelling. So she'll have to come over here and give that a ring to get my attention. Sometimes I'm asleep. Just stretch out the old chair and just... Uh, call her a day so that's it don't need the cord here either I guess do my best to try to keep the place pretty cleaned up this time So thanks for coming along again, and we're now at 273 subscribers. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and comment. I'd like to know where some of you are, because I've got mostly Americans, followed by people from the UK, mostly blokes, I would think. I've got uh, Canadians is third, and I think Japanese are fourth. So, uh, sayonara to all you folks from uh, Japan. See you later. Goodbye. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.